A good morning and a beautiful day to you guys from wherever you're joining us from around the world. We just want to say thank you for logging in. If you're new, welcome to the family. We hope that you are blessed. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We hope you guys are going to be blessed by the word. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is that um, it says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And, you know, I just hope that the word that you're about to hear is the same for you. I hope it nourishes you and nurtures you. Please make sure to get your notebook and your your pen and get ready to write down some amazing word. We thank you guys for joining us. Stay blessed. It's a wonderful morning and uh, greetings to you in the lovely and precious name of Jesus. Thank you for joining in this morning. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning I just want to share with us on a subject that I've entitled the precepts of the Lord. Precepts of the Lord. P R. E-C-E-P-T-S, the precepts of the Lord. Our, our main text will be from Psalm 119. We are going to read the first eight verses of the psalm. Um, we are told this is an acrostic psalm, meaning uh, particular sections begin with uh, di uh, different uh, words or letters of the, of, of the Hebrew alphabet. So this first part is from Aleph. But it reads this way. Blessed, I like the Amplified, it says happy, fortunate, uh, to be envied are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Now notice the different uh, uh, phrases that he uses for the word of God. In this first one he says, who walk in the law of the Lord, the law of the Lord. Blessed are those, or happy, fortunate, to be envied are those who keep his testimonies. He calls them testimonies. Who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. He calls them his ways. That's verse 3. They walk in his ways. The ways of the Lord. Uh, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Precepts. There is the word where we have the title of the message. The precept. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes, statutes, that's another word he uses, statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into all your commandments, he then uses the word commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn of your righteous judgments, he uses the word judgments for the word of God. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Um, in verse 9, he uses the word word. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking it according to your word. <clears throat> so, in these first eight, nine verses, he uses the word, the law of the Lord. All of these are referring to God's word. The law of the Lord, the testimonies of the Lord. His ways, his precepts, um, his statutes, commandments, judgments, word. So these are uh, the words that the psalmist uses. And all of these are referring to the word of God. But we're going to zero in on one that we've uh, picked up from verse 4. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. All, uh, all that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. But verse 4, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. The word precept is made of two, uh, two, two words. Pre, which means before. Preschool, for instance. And then sept, which means set or established. Uh, compare that with concept. Decept, deception. Concept. So set or established. Uh, so when we talk about a precept, we are talking about something which was set or established way before we were created. It's, it's established. It's a principle if you want to put it that way so you can't change it um, and so he says oh that my ways were directed to rather he says you've commanded us to keep your precepts diligently so the precepts of the Lord the word of God was established way before we were created so we can't change it we have to bring ourselves under it not to change it so in our, in our day these days we hear of people talking of different agendas LGBTIQ, 
um, binary, children of the Jews, what sex they are. But God has already chosen for them by the anatomy that they have in terms of who they are, whether boy or girl. So it's, the, the word of God is set. You can't change it. Uh, we, we cannot come with another agenda that can contradict the word of God. That uh, his word was established before we were created. And hence, we are commanded to keep his precepts, to live by them. Uh, precepts are like gravity. Uh, it's a principle. You can't break it. If you, if you break it, it will break you. Let's imagine you are trying to jump from a high-rise building. 20, 30, 40 floors, whatever floors. Burj, Burj Khalifa in, in, in Dubai, whatever. If you jump from there and you stand up and say, I'm so and so, whatever your name is, I, I, I defy gravity. Uh, it will not do anything to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you won't have a parachute. Uh, but, and then if you jump, it does not matter your status. It does not matter your rank in life. You are going to come down at a velocity of 9.8 meters per second squared, according to physics. That's the acceleration that you are going to have as you come to collide with the ground or wherever you will collide. You will meet your, your fate. So you can't, you can't break the law of gravity. It will break you if you try to break it. I know there's issues of the law of lift, but that's a subject for another day um, uh, when we then talk about God is the one who can then override that. Uh, but you can't break it. If you break it, it will break you. You cannot break God's word. If you try to break it, it will, like, like gravity, if you try to break God's word, it will break you. Why? Because God has already put in within his word some particular judgments, just like in gravity, that if you try to break that precept, that law, it will break you. So God in this time that we live has not even judged anyone. People are, being, are experiencing the consequences of breaking what God has already said because within those precepts, within those principles, I embedded a judgment that follows should you break it, just like gravity. And uh, that's what we need to know. You cannot break God's word. It will break you. In the gospel, Jesus puts it uh, in this manner. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to recall the reference, but he says, uh, you need to fall on the rock because if the rock falls on you, it will pulverize you. The rock speaking of the word of God. Fall on the rock uh, or else if the rock falls on you, it will grind you to powder. So you must make a decision to allow the, the word to work in you. Or else if you allow the word of God to uh, fall on you as you break it, it will break you and, and grind you to powder. So it's important, therefore, for us to realize that the precepts were established way we, before we came onto this planet. What we need to do is to respect them and to live by them. If we are to live lives that are good lives that are, are blessed, we must respect those laws. Otherwise, those precepts, otherwise uh, our lives will uh, not be what they are meant to be. And so, this morning I just want to encourage us to live by that word, to live by the precepts of God. Uh, remember again we said, uh, just like gravity has no respecter of persons, so the precepts of God have no respecter of persons. It does not matter what rank you, you, lead, you occupy in life, where, what office you, you op occupy in life, where you are in, whether rich or poor, whatever. It does not respect that. You must obey it. You must live by the precepts or else the consequences of breaking those precepts will follow you. Uh, and so we are exhorted, therefore, the psalmist speaks about uh, uh, living according to the precepts of the Lord, uh, obeying his word. We must be able to, to do that. Um, and we must understand it was said before we, uh, we were created. As a result, there is no right way of doing wrong. I will repeat, there is no right way of doing wrong. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter what age we live in. 
Wrong will remain wrong. Right will remain right. There is no right way of doing wrong. We must decide and know that this is what the, the word of God says. This is what the precepts of the Lord say. And the other thing that we see concerning precepts is that precepts um, are like a ruler. A, 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 and the ruler is used for, they are a standard, let me put it that way. A standard. Um, I was looking at a particular physics book um, which um, you, is used at all level, which speaks about um, measurements. Tom, Tom Duncan is the author of that particular uh, textbook that is used at all level. And he was giving um, descriptions about weight, mass, length, time, distance, also, etc. When it came to mass, this is what Tom Duncan says. The mass of an object is the measure of the amount of matter in it. The unit of mass is the kilogram. And, and it is the mass of a piece of platinum iridium alloy. Platinum iridium alloy. Which is at the office of weights and measures in Paris, France. Um, the gram is one thousandth of a kilogram. So now notice what he says. This is, we are talking about the SIE uh, units, metric system. <clears throat> so the unit of the mass is the, pro, is the kilogram. And it is the mass of a piece of platinum iridium alloy, which is kept at the office of weights and measures in France. In other words, what is simple saying, that is, what, that is the standard for kilograms all over the world. You can't come with your own definition of a kilogram. L let's assume it's half the mass of that one that is in France. And you say, no, this, for me, this is a kilogram. When I'm selling things, this is how I will weigh it. I will weigh it with this, this, this weight that I have, which will be half of what they have in, in France. Uh, you, you can't come up with your own standard. Uh, and uh, with your own kilogram, let me put it that way. You can come up with your own standard. That is not the metric. But we, you can't come and say, this is the kilogram. And then come up and say, that's, that's what is the measure. No, no, no. It's, it's a standard that is set. So when the precepts of the Lord are a standard, in our day we can't come up with our own definitions of what is right and what is wrong. It's already set. You can't change it. Um, and, and that's what we need to understand. Um, again, when we talk of a standard, for instance, a, a ruler that is measure, used to measure length, the ruler not only measures length, but it, we can use it to divide and to draw a line. Uh, so the standard also is for drawing a line. It means that when we then take the standard of the precepts of the Lord, the word of God, we are drawing a line in the sand and we're saying, I will not cross this line. This is my standard. This is where I stop. So if you are, it, what it means if you encounter situations that cause you to contra or to, to, to that will cause you to want to, to skip that standard, to break the standard, you will say, no, I cannot do it because this is what the word of God says. Let me give examples. If you are confronted with a situation where you must lie and the word of God tells us that you do not lie to one another, this, that is the line. That is the standard. That is the line drawn. You must then decide, I will not lie no matter what circumstances are. There is no lie that can further the purposes of the kingdom of God. And so, you mustn't therefore lie. You, 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 sometimes people try to lie to protect others. Say, I oh, know sometimes lies work and sometimes they, do, they don't. And so sometimes, you know, see, these are small lies, white lies. There is nothing like a small lie or white lie. A lie is a lie. And so, you must decide, I'm not going to cross this line. You must decide because the scriptures tell us that no sex outside of marriage. If you are married, you remain with your, with, with, with your spouse. If you are single, no sex with anyone else. And so that is the line that is drawn. You must decide, I am not going to cross this line. If situations or opportunities present themselves, that will want you to cross that line. You can then de uh, declare what you would have already decided to say, I am not going to cross this line. Whatever comes my way, this is my standard. This is, my, this is where I, uh, I live. Many of us, when, when tempted, 
easily cross the line because we don't make the decision prior. You must make the decision before the situation comes around. And when the situation comes around, you already have made up your mind, I am not going to cross this line. Just like Joseph, when uh, Potiphar's wife then offered herself up to say, no, there's no one in the house. Come on. Joseph decided, no, I cannot do this before God. It, it wasn't before Potiphar, before God. And what does he do? He fled. Flee. Flee, youthful us, so says Paul. So he fled. Why? He had a line drawn. If he, had be, if he had no line, he could have easily given in to the woman's demands. But he decided, no, I'm not going to do this. Because there is a line that is drawn. So what? Uh, each one of us, therefore, is exhorted to live according to the precepts of the Lord. They become the standard by which we live our lives, by which we, we gauge our lives, by which we conduct our lives. If you meet a policeman at a roadblock, like here in Zimbabwe, and uh, they then ask you, Sakatoita say, when they ask such questions, it's a soliciting for bribes. What do you want us to do? They've caught you with something uh, uh, wrong in your vehicle. You can then say, ah, oh, no, here is some money for a Coke, uh, which is actually a bribe in essence. But you can then decide. It, it does not matter how long I wait at a roadblock. It doesn't matter how much of, uh, I'm in a hurry. If I, I, I'm caught on the wrong side of the law, I am not going to bribe a police officer. Those are the decisions which we must make. Uh, a lot of our countries uh, um, are plagued with corruption where people have no standard and they, they cross lines and they do things that are unethical because uh, there is something to be gained uh, materially or so. But you must make a decision. I am not going to cross this line because the precepts of the Lord say this. Because the word of God says this. Because this is what the word of God says. And so, I can guarantee you as long as you are on this side of eternity, such opportunities will come here knocking you at your door. And you must be able to make a decision to say, I am not going to do this. I'm not going to do this because this is what the word of God says. <clears throat> uh, so every one of us will face these challenges on a daily basis. <clears throat> they will come our way. And so you must make up your mind. I am going to live according to the principles of the Lord. Um, just like the psalmist says, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. You must keep his precepts. They were set before we came onto the planet and we cannot change them. And it, it is us that must uh, uh, be subservient to those principles. We must live according to those principles. Principles are like a lighthouse. I've already alluded to this, that you can't break them. In the olden days, there used to be lighthouses that would warn ships of dangerous places. Uh, areas within the oceans maybe it's rocks uh, so the lighters would be on the particular place and it would be flashing a light to indicate to, uh, to the ship to say don't come any closer Light, the lighthouse does not move, it is the ship that must move, so the principles do not change, it is us that must change and if you then would then defy the, the light that comes from the lighters, it says oh nonsense I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to go straight to to where this light is, you will suffer damage. The, the ship would be destroyed uh, and it will, it, 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 it will hit the rocks and uh, that's, it, that's what will happen. So lighthouses, lighthouses were meant to warn people. Uh, when They were meant to warn ships uh, of, of danger and that's what the word of God does to us. We must be able to uh, conduct our lives, to align our lives in line uh, with what the word of God says. Otherwise our lives will be destroyed. And so the psalmist tells us. He says. Um, you have commanded us to. To, uh, to keep your precepts diligently. Um, and so we must. Each one of us be able to keep those precepts. And live according to them. And so what we find. In terms of the principles is that. Because we have decided to live according to these particular precepts, what is said by God, we acknowledge it is God who said, who said it. If earthly governments issue decrees or edicts or statutes that are contrary to these precepts of the Lord, we have every right to defy those earthly authorities. We have every right to refuse to bow down to the laws that a government 
decrees that are contrary to the word of God. Uh, because we are governed by the word of God first and foremost. Uh, not by anything else. So, if ethnic governments therefore come up with principles, laws that are contrary to the word of God, we can defy those ethnic governments and, uh, and we will not be violating God's word, but we will be in line with the word of God. And that is what the word of God exhorts us and encourages us to do. Uh, and, and so, this morning I encourage us to reflect on our lives in terms of I know I'm already preaching, preaching something you already probably already know. To reflect on our lives in terms of that which we've accepted as the base doctrine, that which we've accepted as the principles, that which is, is established in our lives. Are we living according to those particular principles? Uh, are, are, are we conducting ourselves according to God's word? I remember when I was a young believer, we, uh, we were staying together as family. Um, I had two brothers. Uh, twin brothers, they are both uh, deceased, they are no more. But um, when I got saved, they probably hadn't conceived the amount of work that had gone into my life, rather the change that had happened in my life. Such that, you know, like they would have done in the past, somebody comes, knocks on the door, and is uh, looking for them, probably they owe they, this particular individual. So they would then say, I go to the door, Tell them I'm, I am not here. But there, there had been such a powerful change in my life. I said, no, I cannot do that. I cannot lie on your behalf. You are here. I said, ah, no, go, go tell them. They thought I would probably do exactly what they said. And so I went to the door and they told them, no, no, come in. He, he's here. They are here. They were both of them too. And it was a shock to them. Too. So this thing of being a Christian is so real that you can actually uh, uh, throw us under the bus. Yeah, yeah, I can do that because I cannot lie on your behalf. I told you, don't, don't, don't send me to the door because I cannot lie. I made that decision. And so it's important. Like I'm saying, each one of us, we, we face such, we, sometimes we think it's small things. But we, even beginning with those small things, we must decide, I am not going to do this. Uh, uh, and that's, that, I think that's what convinced them to say, no, no, this Christian, Christianity thing, is real to, to this young man uh, because they saw. Um, I remember one other time uh, a, a uniform was bought for me, school uniform. And I wasn't too sure where it came from. But uh, it looked like whoever sold the uniform must have stolen it somewhere where they work. So it was sold to us at a cheap up. I refused to wear it. And uh, uh, my, my, my mom had to buy another uh, a uniform because I, refi so I, can't wa I can't wear a uniform that was stolen. This guy uh, looks like he stole it from his workplace. So we, we must make decisions. Uh, and such small decisions will impact us for the future. Uh, oh, like one particular person said, obedience for today is crucial for tomorrow, is important for tomorrow. It, 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 uh, it, it impacts the future. So whatever small steps of obedience that we take right now, they are important even for the future. So we must continue to be obedient even in these things that might look small, but a lot of us will face not only the small things as well, but the bigger things, bigger decisions that might cost you your job because you have refused to bow down to uh, something wrong that you are being asked to do to cross the line and you said, no, I cannot do this. And so it is important, therefore, that we are able to make that uh, uh, shift in our minds and in our lives that this is how we live. The word of God is, how, is what dictates to us our lifestyle, our conduct, how we conduct ourselves, how we handle ourselves. So what it means is each time things come our way, we ask ourselves, what does the word of God say? And that is what guides us in this maze of life, which is many challenges and many things that are contrary to what God's, God's word says. Um, and so this morning, my challenge to you is to uh, live according to the precepts of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the judgments of the the commandments of the the testimonies of the Lord, the ways of the Lord. The psalmist was, oh, that you might teach Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. His ways are already revealed to us in his word. And so, 
Let's make a decision to say, we will live by the word of God. We will live by the precepts of God. Hallelujah. If you are not a believer, uh, you cannot be able to live according to these precepts because the power to live according to these precepts is not there. You need to be able to receive this enablement from the Holy Ghost. And it begins by you accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When you say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe that you died for me, you rose again from the dead. At that moment, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And, and hence from, then, from that moment, uh, God gives you the ability to live this life. The ability to, 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 to walk according to his ways. The ability to conduct yourself in, in his ways. But again, that does not mean our will, will, will is set aside. We still have our will, but we have the enablement to do so. So I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To each one of us as believers, it's a reminder to say, let us keep the precepts of the Lord. Because we cannot break God's laws. If we break it, it will break us. Hallelujah. So we need to align ourselves to his word. Be subservient to his word. Live under his word. Amen and amen. May the Lord richly bless you in this coming week as you live according to his precepts. Uh, as you uh, lead, conduct yourself according to his precepts in your workplace, at home, uh, in the public arena, wherever you find yourself in a school, may you live according to the precepts of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen and amen.